to argue that this planet's rich cultures and languages give each of us our own unique identity. But looking around, from cities to nations to continents, our world is shaping up to be one big neighborhood. For one group of people, there is but only one identity and one trait, one voice and one truth, one heartbeat and one God. And uniting this ever-flourishing family is one gardener, one keeper, spreading the seeds of spirituality and watering all with God's grace. One man who walks day and night to every corner of the world to embrace every beloved soul and gather all of God's seeds. Hazrat Mirza Masroor Ahmad, Khalifatul Masih V, the successor to the promised Messiah salam, and source of the same light as the Holy Prophet Muhammad wasallam, now visiting the Far East of our small world once again. Join us in this special series for the incredible journey of Hazrat Khalifa al Masih to the nations of Singapore and Australia. And let us bring you closer to the far side of the world. In the previous episode, we took you to Australia with Hazrat Khalifa al Masih and brought you the historic Jalsa Salana, classes held by Hazrat Khalifa al Masih with Bokfinoan students the first ever visit made by a Khalifa to Melbourne, including the reception and Friday sermon and press coverage of Hazu's visit. <laughs> Hazu's return to Sydney happened at a very unique and blessed time for the Ahmadiyya Muslim community of Australia. On the 16th of October, the Eid al Adha prayers were offered for the second time by a Khalifa al Masih in Australia at Battle Huda Mosque. The day of Eid is a day of prayer and celebration for all Muslims. The Eid al Adha is offered on the last day of Hajj, and it is a reminder of the sacrifices we must make for God and our fellow beings. Hazur first led the Eid prayer and then addressed nearly 2,000 people gathered at Battle Huda Mosque. Hazur praised the sacrifices of the Prophet Abraham and his family. Hazrat Khalifa al Masih said that true Muslims should learn from their pious examples. He said that the slaughter of animals performed by Muslims on Eid would only prove to be of value if conducted with a pure desire to attain God's nearness. The spiritual leader of the global Ahmadiyya community, Mirza Masru Ahmad, is currently visiting Australia for the first time since 2006. Following Hazu's previous interviews by the press, radio and ABC News 24, ABC Asia Pacific Current Affairs Programme, Newsline, did a special five-minute interview with Hazrat Khalifa al Masih, which was broadcast to the entire Asia-Pacific region, with viewership in the millions. In the interview, Hazu was questioned on his continued efforts of spreading the message of peace to many world leaders and the continued acts of violence and hatred perpetrated against the Ahmadi Muslim community in some parts of the world. Hazu said that the message of Islam as laid out by the community is being widely accepted around the world due to its truthful and peaceful teachings. Speaking of the persecution of Ahmadis in Pakistan and Indonesia, Hazur said that it is the duty of the government to protect all its citizens and treat everyone equally. Hazur said that no government has the right to interfere in any person's faith, and that inshallah there will come a day when Ahmadi Muslims will be able to practice their faith freely 
in every part of the world. As leader of the Ahmadiyya, you've spent a lot of time promoting interfaith dialogue with followers of other streams of Islam. Has your work been successful? We have been trying. And uh, as far as uh, interfaith dialogues are concerned, it is, uh, we are being widely accepted everywhere. And our motto, love for all and hatred for none, is liked everywhere by even whether uh, it is uh, the religious uh, group or a political group or any worldly organization. So this is the true picture of Islam. Islam means peace and love and harmony, reconciliation. And that is the true message. Whenever we take this message, wherever we take this message, it is liked everywhere and it is working. Mirza Masruh Ahmad, thank you very much for your time. On the 18th of October, Hazud delivered the Friday sermon from Bat al-Huda Mosque in Sydney and instructed the community to become the best of people in terms of good deeds and practices. Hazur said that the best people are those who avoid all evil themselves and also advise others to do so in order to avoid God's displeasure. They are also called best people because their faith is strong and they uphold the belief that God watches over everything. They uphold the belief that material lords cannot meet our needs, rather the Lord of all the worlds is the one who listens to prayers. The world should also be told that permanence is in paying heed to and abiding by what God commands. Is the money me जबके जैसा कि मैंने मिसालें भी दी हैं बहुत सी बातें ऐसी हैं जो अल्लाह ताला की नाराजगी की तरफ ले जाती हैं उनका सही इस्तेमाल बुरा नहीं है लेकिन इसका इस गलत इस्तेमाल बुराइयों के फैलाने गलासतों के फैलाने गुलाहों के फैलाने का बहुत बड़ा जरिया बना हुआ है लेकिन यही चीजें नेकियों के फैलाने का भी जरिया है टीवी है मालूमाती और इल्मी बातें बताता है लेकिन बेहयाइयां भी इसकी वजह से आम है इस जमाने में टीवी का सबसे बेहतर इस्तेमाल तो हम अहमदी कर रहे हैं या जमात अहमदी कर रही है मैंने जलसे के दिनों में भी तवज्जो दिलाई थी और उसका बाज लोगों पे असर भी हुआ और उन्होंने मुझे कहा कि पहले हम एमटीए नहीं देखा करते थे अब आपके कहने पर तो जो दिलाने पर हमने एमटीए देखना शुरू किया है तो अफसोस करते हैं कि पहले क्यों ना इसको देखा क्यों ना हम इसके साथ जुड़े हफ्ते के बाजों ने इजहार किया कि हफ्ते 10 दिन में ही हमारे अंदर रूहानी और इल्मी मैयार में इजाफा हुआ है the same evening, a historic reception was held in the Centenary Khilafat Hall at Bad al-Huda Mosque in honor of Hazrat Khalifatul Masih, an event which was attended by more than 300 highly influential dignitaries, including members of the Senate and State, and federal government officials including party leaders, mayors, members of parliament, and police officials. Other guests included faith leaders, charities, and local neighbors. Prior to the event, Hazur officially inaugurated the Khilafat Centenary Hall. Before Hazu's keynote address, a number of dignitaries spoke. The Prime Minister, Tony Abbott, is unable to attend today and has asked me to pass on his best wishes. It is wonderful once again to welcome Your Holiness to Australia. Your distinguished service as an eminent and spiritual Muslim leader is highly regarded and today it is truly a great honour for your community that you are inaugura inaugurating the Caliphate uh, Centenary Hall. Now I will read the following message uh, by the Honourable Barry O'Farrell and it says, uh, I'm delighted to welcome Your Holiness here uh, to the New South Wales community. It is an honour for us to receive a visit from such a venerable spiritual leader. I'm aware of your commitment to achieving world peace and interreligious harmony. I'm sure your visit will strengthen the harmony we already enjoy in New South Wales. Your many followers living in this state are assured of protection and support as they meet their religious obligations based on the Ahmadian beliefs. Best wishes for a happy and successful visit to New South Wales. Signed, the Premier of New South Wales, Barry O'Farrell. For the current bushfire emergency, 
and for the support in need in yesterday's hostile conditions. Uh, I will request uh, Minister Victor Dominello on behalf of the Premier um, Fire Appeal to accept a small check of so $20,000 from His Holiness, please. Okay. I'm with that. Your Holiness, it is an absolute honour and a privilege to share time with you, uh, particularly uh, your message I'm looking forward to that you will deliver here tonight. But having heard your words of wisdom over the time, we are privileged to have someone who walks the world stage with a very powerful message of faith and peace. Uh, in particular, at a time around the world where we see uh, some people seek to use religion as an extreme means to place fear in the hearts of many. It is an absolute privilege to have you here, someone who preaches the need for peace, to have a leader, a religious leader, who is so well regarded by this community here, but right across the globe, who is prepared to stand up and talk about the necessities uh, for peace. Your Holiness, we need more leaders like you. We need more leaders of communities like this community who are prepared to stand up and speak the word of faith and, more importantly, speak the words of peace. Because it is only through voices like yours that we will have stability once more across the globe. That when people are confident that their religious leaders, their political leaders, are prepared to stand up and speak out. Speak out when others seek to terrorise the world, that you are that voice of peace, that you are that voice of hope and that voice of strength, that strength of faith and that voice of courage. And Your Holiness, can I say to you, can I assure you that here in Australia you are among friends. You are among friends in this nation. And we know the Ahmadian, we know that the Ahmadian Muslim community are a righteous people and a good people and a godly people, loyal Australians and hard-working Australians. And in their heart and in their, in their soul, they have a love of good because they have a love of God. And the God that the Ahmadian community worship is the God that I as a Christian worship, the one God, the only God, the God who always was, is now and forever shall be. That's the God that the Ahmadian community uh, worship, uh, as do I. And Your Holiness, your illustrious reputation has preceded you here to Australia. Your stand around the world for interreligious uh, harmony and tolerance and peace. And for these things, for this great, great task that you've undertaken, we praise you and we honour you and we exalt you here tonight, all these members of parliament and all the other dignitaries as well. In his keynote address, Hazu spoke about the misrepresentation of Islam in today's world. He spoke about the objectives of the Ahmadiyya Muslim community and he spoke once again about his grave concerns that the world was heading towards a devastating global war. His Holiness also offered his personal sympathies to the people of New South Wales over the raging bushfires that were causing huge damage to parts of the state. Those amongst you have an influence on the major powers of the world or who can convey this message to those who have access to the corridors of powers should urgently fulfill their responsibilities. Do not consider the problems and conflicts of, today, uh, of today's world to be minor or insignificant. But instead, strive your utmost and make every possible effort to establish peace. Perhaps some amongst you will not agree with me my, with my analysis. However, it is when a person believes that his own strengths, his intellect, and those around him are, are all powerful that he walks on, path, on a path proved with danger, uh, paved with uh, danger. It is at that point 
where a person becomes blind to the existence of God and to his power. That almighty God's decree sets into motion. Remember, man cannot escape the results of his actions and so will have to suffer the consequences of the cruelties and disorders he has perpetrated. Unfortunately, we hear and see right around the globe messages of war and terror and so forth. That is not re uh, reflective or representative of Islam. Uh, this is representative and reflective of Islam. So I, I was delighted to be here. Uh, peace is Islam. And uh, he's carrying the message of Islam uh, to Australia in a way that no others have done. And it was, a, it was just a beautiful message to convey to the wider Australian society. To listen to a leader who walks the world stage talking about the importance of tolerance, of faith and peace. Uh, we need more leaders like that now on the world stage talking about these issues because far too often we see conflict emerge, we see extremism and we see that conflict turn to war. Um, what we need are leaders who are prepared to make their voices voices for peace and His Holiness is somebody who does that so well. It's absolutely magnificent to be able to hear the true message of Islam as distinct from sometimes the aberrations that are put out there and the peaceful messages that are coming across and the genuine love of the people that are here for each other and for this country Australia and for life itself is just a real topping up and a feeling, the feeling of goodwill makes you always leave these uh, meetings with a feeling that all is really good in the world and that there are people working hard to ensure that we will ultimately bring about a peace for everyone and we will be brothers and sisters working together for the good of mankind. If anyone doubts it, I invite them to come to a meeting and listen to the genuine speech and feel the fellowship and the genuine love for each other that's here and they will go away changed. The Australian lands spread far and wide with a range of cultures and religions living together. After the establishment of the first mosque almost 30 years ago, another mosque had been built, this time in Brisbane. On the 22nd of October, Hazu departed for Brisbane. After a short flight, Hazu was received in Brisbane and travelled to the newly built Badal Masrud Mosque, where he was received by more than 200 members of the Jama'at. This was the second time Hazrat Khalifa Tun Masih had visited Brisbane. The Bat al Masrur Mosque has been built in a year and has the capacity for over 2,000 people. On Friday, the 25th of October, Hazur officially inaugurated the mosque and then delivered the first Friday sermon live to the whole world. In his sermon, Hazur said that with his grace, God has enabled the Ahmadis of Brisbane and the Ahmadis of Australia to build a new mosque. We could not thank God enough for this favor. Hazur said that it is important to be just and fair. God has made the community of believers as one entity. This standard will be upheld when each person is conscious of the pain of others, when justice and fairness is met. This masjid ke banne se yahan rehne walon wale ahmadiyon ki zimmedwariyan badh gayi hain aur wo ye hain ki is masjid ko abad bhi karna hai unhone iski aur is us zinat ko lekar aana hai is masjid mein जो खुदा ताला की नजर में जीनत है यह भी जिम्मेदारी है आपकी 
اور ایک دوسرے کے حقوق بھی ادا کرنی ہے یہ بھی ذمہ داری ہے آپ کی اور علاقے میں حقیقی اسلام کا پیغام بھی پہنچانا ہے یہ بھی ذمہ داری ہے آپ کی Previously, a reception was held in celebration of the mosque, which was attended by many members of parliament, the Queensland Police Commissioner, and many of the local mosque neighbours. Prior to the event, Hazu met with a few local MPs, mayors and councilmen. As, as a token or as a part of respect from my community, from my Yugen Bear community, I would love His Holiness to accept a gift on behalf of us and it's actually um, a didgeridoo made by a local artist by the name of Uncle Joey Skeen. Um, so if you could please accept that. With a didgeridoo, Aboriginal women aren't allowed to touch them or play them, so I've asked um, Mr Ladder, the MP, to, to present it. So, yeah. I'll just finish off by saying, Jingi Walu Walu Jingi, welcome to Yugen Bear Country. Whether it is the annual Clean Up Australia Day activities, Red Cross appeals, Biggest Morning Tea, Drumley Walk or Clean Up from 2011 and 2013 floods, the Armadale community have a clear focus on helping their fellow man. When floodwaters tore a path through Logan City in January this year, more than 50 members of the Armadale community donned the rubber gloves and spent many days assisting in the clean up effort. While families came to terms with the loss of their belongings, they were fortunate in that they could have the generous members of the community to lean on in their time of crisis. So Your Holiness, when you work under the creed or ethos or ideology of love for all and hatred for none, when you speak of peace and promote that message across the rest of the world, and you talk about service unto others, let me say that your message is alive and well in our community and it is being spread every day through the actions of your faithful. In his keynote address, Hazur reassured the local people that the new mosque would be a centre of peace. He said that true worship required high moral standards at all times and he spoke of the humanitarian efforts made by the Ahmadiyya Muslim community. Hazur said that worshipping at a mosque is rendered entirely meaningless if the people offering prayers did not treat their fellow human beings with love and compassion. Indeed, God Almighty has said that the prayers of a person who does not follow his commands will prove to be a means of destruction for him. So I quoted some of the examples. There are numerous examples in the Holy Quran or in the teachings of Islam. The truth is that if the prayers of a Muslim do not lead him towards fulfilling the rights of mankind, his prayers cannot be classed as real worship. The founder of the Ahmadiyya Muslim community has said, I show, to show love, to show love and compassion and to be sympathetic to humanity is a huge form of worship and is an excellent means of gaining Allah's player. Thus, true worship requires fulfilling the rights of mankind in an entirely selfless manner. Before leaving Brisbane, Hazur visited a famous attraction known as Fruit World, an agricultural tourist attraction that grows over 500 different varieties of tropical and rare fruit. It is also an eco-tourist destination where fruit growing is blended with a native reserve of rainforest trails, landscaped waterways and native animals. The plantation is situated on the rim of the largest extinct volcano in the southern hemisphere and offers breathtaking views of the Tweed Valley and Macpherson Ranges. Upon arrival, Hazu was greeted by the park administration who presented Hazu with a memento for his visit. Hazu was then given an exhibition by the awori speaking people, the original land dwellers of Australia, who expressed their history, customs and sacred totems through traditional song and dance. Each dance is in honour to an animal that a tribe would hold sacred, namely the bee, kangaroo and the emu bird.
very much. Thank you. Hazu was then taken on a personal tour of the park, where a guide showed Hazu the various fruits and plants grown around the plantation, some of which are very rare and extinct in other parts of the world. Hazu then affectionately interacted with the most famous animals in Australia, the kangaroo and wallaby. Kangaroos are large marsupials that are endemic to Australia. They have powerful hind legs and females have a pouch on their belly where joeys complete their postnatal development. After a whole blessed month, Hazu's historic tour of Australia had approached its end. On the 28th of October, Hazu departed for the next part of his journey. Hundreds of community members had taken time off work on a Monday morning just to bid farewell to their beloved Khalifa, who had spent such a long time with them. Many of the Khuddam had taken a whole month off work, some on unpaid leave, just to serve Jamal during this time. Join us next week as we bring you Hazu's tour of New Zealand, including the historic meeting with the Maori king and the unveiling of the Holy Quran translation in Maori language. <laughs>